Welcome to a new DIY engineers video. In this video, I'll go over the color configurations of the Raspberry Pi camera library called Pi Camera 2 and some basics on color spaces in general. Now, in a previous video, I explained how data from images are stored in arrays. Check out that video if you're not familiar with the concept. In summary, colored images are stored in multidimensional arrays, with the most common being a 3D array where two dimensions cover the height and width of the image and the depth covers the color data for every pixel. OpenCV uses BGR as a default. This is almost the same as a typical RGB that you might be familiar with, except that the color data is stored in order of blue, then green, then red. That's why it's BGR. Now, let's take a look at this space further. Here, you can see in my screen, this image. Who's the creator? Emmanuel. I'm supposed to give credit to this guy. If I click, you can see, right? We have red, blue, and green. If you combine red and green, you get yellow, blue, and green. It's I'm guessing this cyan or whatever that is, and then blue and red gives you this pink, right? So this is the color space. Now there's another way of looking at it. Let's take a look at that. Shark D. Anyways, you can see, right? This gives you the 3D space of the three variables that are needed to define any color by superpositioning green, red, and blue. So obviously you have to specify how much blue how much green and how much red to fully specify color in the BGR or RGB space. And then of course we can have an axis for each, that's why it's three variables. And as we saw in the th previous video, you need three numbers to specify the color of a pixel. So now let's talk about the Raspberry Pi camera settings. So this is the Pi Camera 2 library, which is lib camera based Python library for Raspberry Pi cameras. This has a whole table of contents with a lot of information. But if we go to section 422 and then we go to image formats, you can see the wide variety of formats that are offered. So you have XBGR8888. So this just says that every pixel is packed into 32 bits. And that looks like the typical RGB followed by an alpha channel that tells you how transparent that pixel is. So basically gives you an extra data point for transparency. You can also order them as BGR. And then you have the typical BGR or RGB option. So if you just want BGR, you need to pick RGB 888. And if you want RGB, you have to pick BGR 888. Now, as you can see, you can take either BGR and RGB. And there's an option for, like I said, for the alpha channel for the transparency. We will focus on the standard 24 bits per pixel, meaning no alpha channel. Now, one thing to take into account is that OpenCV by default uses BGR. So we should pick the option or will be recommended to pick the option that gives you BGR. Now, pay close attention. That's the one called RGB 888. So that's why they have this huge warning that says Pi Camera 2 takes six pixel formats naming from lib camera which in turn takes from certain underlying Linux components. The results are not always most intuitive. For example, OpenCV always wants the pixels to be in BGR, like I said, for which you should use the RGB888 format and not the BGR. So the whole point is, as you can see, the one that gives you BGR, it's called RGB, which is not intuitive at all. So that's why I'm calling it out specifically. So don't miss that. Now, what would happen if you pick the BGR by accident and in reality gave you RGB? Well, as you can see, the Gs are aligned, but whatever the camera picked up as blue, it will be fed to OpenCV as red and vice versa. So that would result in some odd images, right? So in a previous video, I did an example of detecting a green ball. And as part of that, I picked BGR, which gave us RGB. If you pick a, take a close look, the, the Python code was still able to find the green ball because, I mean, G is in the middle and it's the same output. So I was able to filter out the green correctly. But you can see by looking at the top video and the bottom one, the bottom one showing the OpenCV output, that in the bottom one, my hand looks bluish and the wall looks a little bit bluish, even though the one at the top, which shows the real colors, my hand is not blue and the wall is not bluish. So you can kind of see how you get odd results. And even my, my jacket looks weird. It's supposed to be gray and I don't know what that color is. So that just gives you an idea of what happens if you mix them up. Now, if we look at the example from the previous video where I showed how to get live feed from a Raspberry Pi camera, you could see there was this line where we have the Pi Cam 2 configure and there's a section where we specify the format. So here's where you want to say or pick the RGB option if you're going to get the output BGR, which is what we need for OpenCV. So that's where we pick RGB. So now what about other color spaces? You might notice that in that video where I talked about filtering the green, I made a conversion from BGR to HSV. 
We did that with the HSV command, BGR to HSV. Now, why do we do that? First, let's remember that the goal was to track a green ball. So again, why HSV? For the example, it came down to the fact that it's easier to define a pure color and then the shades of that color in HSV than it is in BGR. So it's easier to tell OpenCV what to filter out. Now, why is this? Let's go ahead and look at the HSV color space in more detail. Here you have the HSV space. So the HSV color space is a model in cylindrical shape. And this model H stands for hue and it defines the purity of each color. So as you move along the angular position, you go from pure red, you can see it here at zero degrees. Then at 120 degrees, you get to pure green. At 240, you move to pure blue and then you're back to 360, which is the same as zero, back to pure red. And then in between them, you have just the combinations of them, just like when we looked at the BGR or RGB and the colors were overlapping, right? Between red and green, you get yellow. Between green and blue, you get the cyan. And then between blue and red, you get the purple that we're all used to or pink. So the point is, as you move angularly from 0 to 360, you pass through the pure colors, red, green, blue, and anything in between. Now, S is for saturation. That's this. And you vary it by moving radially. So from the center axis to the outer edge of that cylinder. And it defines the strength or intensity of the color. A lower saturation means a faded color. Full saturation is full intensity of that color, not faded. So again, max is outside of the cylinder, lowest one is inside. Now V is for value and it defines the brightness. The value varies along the height or vertical position of the cylinder with the top being the widest or brightest and the bottom being the darkest. And you can see it in this picture. And now these are helpful to take a look here, right? This shows the angular position. You can see the red, green, blue, and this is a value of half. And that's why you can see that the brightness is not super bright, not as bright as this. And then you can see here, we cut a cross section cutting through red and blue. So like if we sliced it through here, and then you can see that it's dark at the bottom. And as it goes up, it becomes brighter. And then you can see with the fade, you know, we talk about it being faded with the saturation that in the center is white. And as you go to the outside, it gets a purer form of that color. The range is in OpenCV a little bit different from here of the 0 to 360 and whatnot. So the hue range is from 0 to 179 and the saturation is from 0 to 255, same as the value, 0 to 255. So it's important to always convert this from other references. So for example, if we know that green is 120, but we want to use it in OpenCV, we should specify 60. Now, back to the example in white, HSV made it clearer and easier to filter. As you can see in the HSV space, it's easier to define what pure green is. You would probably pick a range somewhere in this area you will decide which height, you know, you don't want it to be in the dark because that's no longer green. And then you will decide how faded or how far you want to be from the axis. In our example, we picked a heat range from 29 to 64, which would be close to like 60 degrees or somewhere here, all the way to 120 or so. We probably could have gone a little bit further than the 64, but that's what we did and it worked. A saturation from 80 something to 255. Right, so that defined how pure it was. That's not in this view, but that will be here. So we got pretty good range, right? If you go from 84 to 255, that's definitely more than half the range. So we still got some of the faded greens to be acceptable in that filtering. And then values, six to 255, so pretty much everything except pitch black. So as, as you can see, reading this is intuitive and it's a little bit more obvious when I wanna get a specific color, a pure color, and some variances or variations of that color. So when doing that and looking for a pure color and anything in the surrounding, it's better to use HSV to perform filtering. That's why we did it. Now, again, the images coming from the camera are going to be in BGR. So all you have to do is just convert it and perform your analysis. So hopefully this was helpful. We talked about RGB and HSV color spaces. We talked through the Raspberry Pi camera color configuration and settings. So I hope you liked it. And if you found that helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.